Hi there, Stampin' Friends. Welcome to Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. As always, I'm glad you're here. Happy hump day. Oh, it's only Wednesday. It is a long week. Of course, last week, the last couple weeks actually have felt very long to me. Just uh, have a whole lot on my mind and um, some people I'm concerned about and um, trying to get wedding invitations out. Um, what else is going on? Um, just sent out my class kits for my biggest class to go ever. I had the most people register for the Garden Birdhouses class to go, 33. So I'm excited that every month um, my classes are growing and growing. Um, got there just in the nick of time before the post office closed today. I think I was there at 519 with all of my packages and they close at 530. So I'm considering that a um, win for the day. Anyways, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, but I'm here and excited to share um, some tips and a project with you tonight. So this is me, I wash my face just thinking, oh, maybe that'll help me um, perk up a little bit. So this is my no makeup, you get me as I am kind of evening. Um, first of all, I wanna throw a shout out to Sherry Parker, who sent me this beautiful card. Beautiful card, excuse me. Sherry is, um, I guess in the Stampin' Up! family, I would call her my grandmother. So she is my upline's upline and very active, um, has events for us, um, meetings and Christmas gatherings and um, shoebox swaps, all kinds of things. But it's always a fun surprise to get a card from Sherry in the mail. So um, I wanted to show you that. Um, tonight I'm using the Paradise Palms bundle. This is my first time using it. Um, I have a plan and I was going to do a sample and then I decided I'm just going to wait because so often people ask me, how do you put the stickers on the rubber stamps? So I'm going to start by showing you two ways to do that. And then we'll get into making tonight's card. And I'll be using both the blending brushes and the Stamparatus for um, tonight's card. So I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, please, uh, while I am switching my camera around, would you please share this live video and invite others to join us this evening? Okay, let me check where I'm sitting here. Sure, I'm in a good spot. It shows up a little bit different on my computer screen than what I'm seeing on my phone screen, so just give me a moment. Okay, I think I think that's gonna do it. Alrighty, so Paradise Palms is in the um, January to June mini catalog, so it will be around for a little bit yet. Um, gosh, off the top of my head, I can't remember if it's carrying over to the new catalog or, or not. So let me take a quick peek at the index here of the new catalog and see if I can you real quick it is oh that's good news um, because it's already been very popular so this is currently in the January to June mini catalog but it will carry over to our new um, our new annual catalog starting May 3rd 
Um, one thing I want to point out to you before we get into all this, because I'll be showing you lots of different products tomorrow, April 21st only, Thursday, April 21st only, is a free shipping day. Um, Stampin' Up! announced this to our demonstrators yesterday that they'd be having a flash sale. And the flash sale is that everyone gets free shipping when they order $75 or more. So that's for demonstrators, for customers, for workshop orders, um, anything. And you can add clearance items to that order. You can add um, anything from the January to June mini catalog. You can add items from the um, kits collection online, and you can add products from the current annual catalog, which includes the um, anything on the last chance list that is still available. So some of those items that are still available from the last chance list um, are discounted. So you would get the free shipping on your order of $75 or more, and um, then that would be added savings in addition to the discount on any of those last chance items. So it's a great time to um, get some things from your wish list or um, those last chance items that you've been considering purchasing. Now is a great time because you'll get free shipping on those. And it's also a great time to stack up, stock up on all of your um, staples for your craft room. So for example, I went through um, my cardstock um, because you know I go through a lot of that. I went through my cardstock and made a list um, so that I get well stocked on that. And I also am stocking up on, what else did I have on there? Envelopes and or something else. Oh, some adhesives. So things I know that I will use, I'm stocking up on. Also, keep in mind, and I did post this to um, my Facebook group today as well as my blog, stampinpeace.com, there is a list of items that will have price increases in the new catalog starting May 3rd. Um, those do include ink pads, um, the packs of the eight and a half by 11 cardstock, uh, stampin' dimensionals, adhesive sheets, uh, I'm trying to think what else is on there. Punches that are $18 are going up to $19. Uh, but you can see that list on both um, Facebook page and Facebook group. So stampinpeace.com uh, is my blog. And then my Facebook page, Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe, where you are right now. And then my Stampin' Peace VIP group. So that list of those few items that will have price increases starting May 3rd is there. So you might want to consider that. So I feel I'm double dipping tomorrow with um, stocking up on my cardstock because I'm getting it at the current price instead of the increased price that starts May 3rd. And I'm going to get free shipping because my order is greater than $75 or will be. Um, I haven't been able to place it yet. And please note it is midnight mountain time to 11.50 mountain time on April 21st. So if you're on the East um, Eastern Standard Time like I am, that means 2 a.m. to 2 a.m. So just um, be aware of that. Anytime Stampin' Up! puts out um, a time-sensitive promotion, it is based on mountain time, okay? So yes, take care of your um, free shipping orders tomorrow, $75 and over, and you will get free shipping. So before we start, I want to um, give you a quick little lesson on how to put the stickers 
on your uh, rubber stamps, your red rubber stamps. As you know, we have two types of stamps, red rubber like this set, and then we also have photopolymer sets. And I won't put the stickers on all of these because I don't um, want us to waste time. We'll want to get to our project. But I want to show you two different ways to um, put your stickers on the red rubber stamps. So the first way, which is what I often do, just because it was the first way I learned to, and I'm, you know, it's habit. I pull off the um, adhesive backing, I'll call it. And each one of these has a slit in the center, so it's very easy to peel off the one half and then the other. And I do peel mine off all the way, and then I just very carefully hover my stamp over the sticker and when I feel like I have the edges lined up well I just pull it up and there it is and remember they're super sticky so stick them to something right away I can put mine right there another way to do it is like this you actually will remove in fact I should have showed you a little bit different way you actually put the sticker on a clear block and then you can lay your stamp down so it's red rubber side down with the foam side up and then again, you just match up the edges of the sticker to the red rubber stamp. All right, so that's another way. Um, actually, I'm gonna leave that on there because I'm, well, no, we're gonna use that, but I'll be using the, um, I'm not sure. No, I will have this on here. Um, one other way and you can decide if this is for you or not. And I will say, when you're using the clear block method, um, be very, very careful that you're looking at it the correct way. Let's do this large set of palms. So some people will also just peel off the whole label like this that means they get less confused if they still have that adhesive backing on, which I would suggest this way if you know, you're know you trying this for the first time. And you can just match it up and see. Now it's not going to stick because I have not removed the backings. But I can do the same thing. Press this down onto a clear block and then I can remove the adhesive backing. This might be a good time to use the piercing tip of your take your pick tool. And just very gently so you're not ripping the sticker. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, just match up like that, okay? So I got the same result doing it this way. It's just that this time I only um, pulled off the whole sticker from the sheet, keeping the adhesive backing on. And this one I pulled the backing off at the same time I pulled the sticker from the sheet, okay? All right, so let's just, oh, and I'm gonna give you one more tip about this. And I typically um, won't do it tonight because we're on a Facebook Live and I know you're eager to see tonight's project. But one thing I wanna tell you is that I always keep the backing. So if you'd pull all these pieces out, I would keep this backing and I lay it in my case. And then when I'm finished working on a project, I'll put all my stickers 
or my, um, not stickers, my um, stamps inside. So then when it's cleanup time, it's very easy to see, oh, wait a second, Mary, you're not done cleaning up. There's two stamps that are missing from the stamp set. All right, especially that's especially helpful if you're using more than one stamp set for a particular project, okay? And I'll also point out that we've got some lovely, wonderful dies that coordinate with the stamp set. All right, so now it's project time. Now it's project time. For this, you we will be using blending brushes and I'm going to suggest that you have some scrap paper because you know with blending, it's helpful to um, start your blending off your cardstock and then move on to the cardstock. And if you're moving, if you want your blending to go all the way across your card over the edges, you'll want to protect your work surface. So I've chosen five colors to use. Misty Moonlight, Highland Heather, Flirty Flamingo, Mango Melody, and Daffodil Delight. And I'm going to start with the Misty Moonlight. By the way, on, um, on this page, Stampin' Peace with Mary Nave, today I posted a question. Which will you, um, which retiring in color will you miss the most? Um, Bumblebee, Cinnamon Cider, Misty Moonlight, Magenta Madness, or Just Jade? Um, I just scrolled through really quickly. Over 80 people responded. And Misty Moonlight, I think, may be um, the top one. But all of the colors were mentioned at one time or another. Okay. Yes, that is a difficult question, Jenny, because I get used to using them all. So I'm starting with Misty Moonlight, and I'm going to go across the top. Looks like I have a little wrinkle in my paper, but that's okay. And I want this a little bit darker. What I'm working towards is like a nighttime sky or a sunset sky. Okay. And then from there, I'm gonna leave that open, I think. From there, I'm going to add some Highland Heather. And I do want my colors to overlap. And we can always go back in and make these darker if we feel that's what we want to do. But I think it's always best start out with less. You can always add more ink rather than going too heavy. I'm going to blend these two colors in a bit more. And do you see that, how there's no clear line of where um, one color ends and the next one begins? And then next I'm going to add some Flirty Flamingo. Clean off my brush a little bit. I always think it's so pretty when the evening sky gets that um, pink and orange going. And then next I will do Mango Melody. Oh, that's, the pad seems to be pretty wet. Go back in with a little 
more of the flirty flamingo, blending those lines in a little more. And then, I guess I should have had these where you could see them. But you know how it is with lots of ink pads. It gets a little um, crazy, crowded. And then, and I try to keep my um, blending brushes in order too of how I use them and which inks I use them with. And then I'm gonna add some Daffodil Delight at the bottom. Now, like I said, we can go back in and make any of these darker. I think I will go back and just, but you can see we're getting a really nice um, evening sky look with the colors blended. And when I'm using multiple colors, I, I like to do just what I showed you. I like to do all of the colors and then decide if I want to go back and add more. Because once I've done all of the colors, then I have a good idea. Um, is the entirety, is the whole picture um, what I want it to be? Rather than, oh, did I make that blue dark enough? Did I make that misty moonlight um, dark enough or should I add some more ink or gee I wonder if that's enough flirty flamingo I can kind of get that sense when I see the whole thing together you might be different okay yes um, Terry you uh, you should start off onto your scrap paper and then move on and I'll show you a reason why we kind of swirl our blending brush in the ink pad. And then if we go right down onto our paper, you get something like this happening. But if we do that same thing and just start with the blending on the scrap paper and then move over, we don't get this. Because that, once it's there, you can't blend that in. You can't make it softer, okay? And again, I always recommend um, that you start with less ink and add more as you feel you want to. And we're actually going to make two cards tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and do the blending on the second one. This time I'm going to go a little heavier on my colors to start with because I've practiced other times and I feel comfortable. But if you're just getting used to blending, I would suggest you start lighter, take a look at the whole picture, and then decide if you want to add more ink. Oops. And if you're using um, the same brush for similar colors, just kind of wipe it on your scrap paper or your grid paper until it starts to come clean. You see how I'm going heavier this time around?
And you can see too, like when I blend the Flirty Flamingo and the Mango Melody, um, you see less pink and orange. You get a whole different shade. Um, am I pressing hard? Um, generally, you do not want to press hard. I just kind of have my finger here. I think it helps me. Um, I guess it helps me think I, I think I feel more in control of the brush rather than this. But no, you don't need to press hard. I just kind of put my finger there just, I don't know why. Feel comfortable with it. Um, it's better to go use a light touch and repeat the blending when you're adding more ink. Okay, you can go harder, but my recommendation is you go light, okay, light hand. And you can see they're very similar. One thing I love about the blending technique is they're always going to be a little bit different. You might be making the same card, and that's why I wanted to show you these um, side by side, to do them at the same time, uh, because they're always going to be different look unique, okay? All right, so now what are we going to do with this? Jenny says, it looks like a sunset. I'm glad to hear you say that because that's exactly what I want it to be. And again, if, you know, some people might think they want a whole lot more blue and less of these other colors. Just a matter of personal preference. Alrighty, so we're going to stamp directly on these now, and I'm going to use my Stamparatus, and we're going to stamp um, with black, so it'll look like silhouettes against the sunset, and I am going to pull off my magnets. Remember, these magnets are super strong, so you really do not want them um, too close together or else they snap together and they can break like this one did. I'm going to, and I'm sure you've heard me say this before, I always like to put my um, cardstock down somewhere in the neighborhood of this logo so that I'm always putting it in the same place if I'm making multiples. And for this one, I think I'm gonna go all the way over. Just like that. And then I'm going to use this. Actually, let's let's do this one step before I do the Stamparatus. I want to put some of this grass on there. So I'm just going to stamp in black. Where's my, and I'm using Black Memento. You know, that's my go-to black. I'm just going to stamp right along the bottom like that. I'll do it on the second piece as well. When I'm making multiples, um, I like to do things assembly line. In other words, um, do the same step for each. You know, I'm going to put down, you'll see me using my grid paper multiple ways today. I'm going to put this down on here as well. That way, if my ink goes off of my cardstock, it won't be getting on the surface of my Stamparatus. Not that it can't be cleaned, 
but um, when that happens, it's easy to um, mess. What do I want to say? It's easy to um, get the ink on your fingers or on other car pieces of cardstock, that sort of thing. So now I'm just going to lay this stamp here because I know I want that there. Um, let's see. And I'm also going to use this one. And I'm not going to worry about putting the sticker on right now. Now this would be tricky. If I want these to meet, I have to make sure um, that those stamps would overlap. And that's not something I wanna do with my Stamparatus. So I'm going to press this down with one of the stamping plates. And then it picks up both of my stamps. Since I'm coloring are, or inking both of these with the same color ink. I can have them on the same stamping plate, okay? Make sure my magnets are not in the way. I'm gonna use my Stamparatus pressure tool that my dear friend Joan Horner gave me. And look at that. Wonderful, right? Now what would happen if I didn't get something dark enough? I could just go over that same rubber stamp with the black ink again and it matches up perfectly. Do you see? And then the color is even more bold. Let's do it with the small pine trees as well. Or palm trees, not pine trees. See? I can make that more bold too. Even if the image stamped well, but I want the color to be more bold, I can do that. Um, I am going to put the sticker on this one just so that it is a little bit easier to see where the palm leaves would meet the trunk of the tree. And you have to, you have to understand it may not be perfect from the sticker to um, how the red rubbers cut, but it, it's, it's gonna work out close either way. So I'll want that right about there. And then press that down to pick up the stamp on the stamping plate. Again, I'm going to, am I still on the screen here? Again, I'm going to apply my black memento ink. The Stamparatus is really great for multiple, um, making multiples of the same card. It's great like this when you are stamping several things on the same piece of paper. Um, it's also great for people that have um, maybe arthritis or difficulty with their hands. This is a little bit easier, okay? easier on the hands then. And have you ever stamped a lot and you get that, well, I call it stamper's cramp? And I usually get mine right in my thumb area. Um, this can help you avoid that as well, especially when you're stamping a whole, whole lot. All right, I think that looks beautiful. What do you think? Let's just quickly do a second one here. And this time, this time I'm going to use, I'm going to pull off the smaller stem for now. 
not stem, trunk. Deciding if I want that again. Actually, I think I'm going to, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Changing my mind midstream here and it's not what I planned. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to do something like this. And I'm going to pick up both of these. You can see I had a little residual um, ink on those first stamps I used, but that's okay because everything's in place. It should stamp right on top of that. If you're concerned about that, take your Simply Chamois and just wipe off your stamps in between when you're switching to. The purpose of this is just, just to give you even pressure um, when you're stamping. My image is stamped well, but I'm going over it just to make them a little more bold. Now, as you remember, I moved the placement of that smaller pine tree. So this time I do want to be sure to wipe off the palm leaves for that small palm because I'm going to be placing it in a different spot. So I'm going to pick that up. We're going to ink this and then I'll show you how we can add the larger palm. And of course, you know, we can do all of this with our clear blocks, right? We don't have to have the Stamparatus, but it sure is convenient. Okay, I didn't get quite there, but that's all right. I'm okay with that. I'm gonna make it just a wee bit darker. So add some more ink. And then I don't even have to remove this if you um, want to just wipe it with your chamois to avoid getting ink on your fingers or your craft table. Now I'm flipping it around and now I have a whole new stamping surface to use. So now I'm going to take that larger um, palm leaf stamp and place this one where I want it. And do you see how it? I wouldn't have been able to place them side by side? So I'm gonna pick up that stamp, ink it up. Press it down. Oh, that looks good. I wanna make it darker though. The Stamparatus is one of my favorite tools. And we have been without a tool like this for so long. For, so for those of us that um, have stamped without it for so long, it took me a while to even remember, hey, pull out your Stamparatus. It's going to um, be so much better. And I especially like it when I'm doing black silhouettes because I can double stamp, and I don't have to worry about lining up the stamped images. Okay, now this is going to bother me right here. So, I was looking to see, do we have coconuts? We do have a little coconut stamp here. I'm not even sure which way they would go. So I'm thinking I'm just going to um, 
fill in with the coconuts. I'm going to put the sticker on that, though, because I want to see better. I'm a, very much a visual person. I prefer to have the stickers on. So I always know what I'm stamping and where I'm stamping. And I don't really know which way these should go. I'm going to do it like just like this. And I'm going to... Oops, not quite, doesn't quite make it. So what I'm going to do is wipe off the original stamps I did, pick it up and flip it around. Remember, you can only pull up your stamping plates when they are completely vertical, when they're straight up and down, okay? If you try to pull it out any other way, it's not going to happen. Okay, so straight up and down. So now I have a fourth stamping surface. So now I have that in place, my little coconuts. And I picked up the stamp. Where's my ink pad? Got buried here. I'm going to stamp those little coconuts. And I love how it filled that space in. Perfect. Just get those little coconuts now. All right, so what do you think of that? How many of you <clears throat> have the Stamparatus and enjoy using it, find it to be helpful? And what I showed you just now, those are just a few of the things the Stamparatus does. Um, on my blog, I'll have to go back and find the date of the blog post, um, but also on my YouTube channel, I did a four-part series of um, different ways to use the Stamparatus, and you can even use it with die cuts, which is quite interesting and very, very helpful. You can even use it um, with punch stamping punched pieces, okay? All right, let's put these together so I can give away some cards tonight. If you haven't already shared this live video, I hope that you will. You can share right now or you can share at the end afterwards. So whether you do it beginning, during, or after, I always appreciate it. Okay, so in my mind, I have two different ways to finish off these cards. First one is just like that. Actually, I'm going to put this on the inside and then I'm going to cut the outer white piece a little bit differently so that I have the same narrow border of black in both places on my card front. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. So... So instead of cutting it five and a quarter by four inches, I'm going to cut it five and three eighths by four and an eighth. I'm going to cut this one the same way. Might as well, because I'll use it one way or another, if not night tonight on another project. don't necessarily have to match up the borders um, but for me there's just something about doing that 
You see the difference? I like that both of my black borders are the same. But that's completely up to you. Whether you do the narrow borders or the standard size border. I'll put this right in the center. I'll finish off the other card and then we'll choose some sentiments. But look how striking that is against the black and white. Love it. Judy, yes, if you have a Stamparatus, get that out and use it more. Okay, the other way that I thought we could finish one of the cards is by doing just a plain white card base and putting this right in the center. So that gives you two different options. I'm very much a layer person. I love layers, but I'm also somebody who really appreciates the um, thought less is more sometimes, you know, the more simple. But either way, I think you get a very, um, get very striking results. What do you think? Okay. Let's add some sentiments. I think there's some good ones in here. Um, happy birthday. Hope you find a little paradise wherever you may be. Retirement wishes. Wishing you a warm and beachy kind of day. I think, I don't know. What do you think? Luann says, very pretty. Judy says she loves these. Claudia says she likes both of them. All right, how about, what is this one? I'm just gonna put these stickers on really fast. A beachy kind of day. Okay, I was hoping somebody would say that because that's the one that kind of grabbed my attention. I think that's this one. Yes. I also like happy retirement because, you know, what do we think about people who are retiring? Oh, they're just going to vacation and live a calm, peaceful, serene life, go on adventures to the beach and other wonderful places, right? Oh, Barbara, your son works in Hawaii. Well, then obviously these would be awesome for him. All right. There's my block. I already put it away. And my black memento ink. Does anybody have this bundle? I didn't ask that. Does anybody have this bundle? Okay, and I want to see, not sure these will fit. Oh, it does fit right there. Awesome. Wasn't 100% sure it would fit in that small oval, but it fits nicely. And I'm thinking just add those right there. I'm not going to um, mount it on the black scallop because I think it's just going to be a little too much and take away from the other black silhouettes that I have on the card already. So I'm just going to add these by popping them up on a couple of dimensionals. I'm using the outside edge of what's left of my dimensional sheet. Shanda says, you don't own it yet, but it might be part of your free shipping order tomorrow. Don't you just love free shipping? I'm just, like I can tell you, demonstrators get as excited as customers do. 
So when they announced it yesterday, um, what a great surprise. What a great Tuesday. All right. What do you think? Okay. So maybe this bundle is something you would like to add to your um, free shipping order tomorrow. It is called the Paradise Palms Bundle. And as you can see, it has um, dyes that directly coordinate with some of the, uh, or match up with some of the stamps. And yet it has some other ones that really are meant just to enhance the bundle in other ways. Um, another thing you might add to your free shipping bundle or an order if you don't already have them is some blending brushes. These come in a pack of uh, three for $12. Um, and I won't have you come with me to my bathroom sink. But what I'm going to do is, because I have used these quite a bit, some of these weren't even washed since the other day. Remember we did, um, we used them with the Simply Succulents large die cut. Um, so what I do is, and I don't anticipate using them tomorrow, most of the time I just clean them on scrap paper keep rubbing until the color's gone. But when they get heavily um, inked or I've used them several times in a row, I do like to rinse them out. So I just run them under uh, cold water in my sink and kind of towel them off a little bit, but then I'd let them air dry overnight. Um, and they're as good as new. And remember they can stain and that's perfectly fine, just like our sponge daubers stain, but they work the same, okay? But like I said, you don't have to wash them every time, but when you've used them a lot and they have a lot of ink in them, it's a good idea to wash them at that time. Alrighty, if you would like to be entered into the drawing to win one of these cards, please type in the comments, Paradise Palms. Okay, type in the comments, Paradise Palms. And your name may be chosen to win one of these. Okay, are there any questions before I say goodnight? I'm going to scroll back here a little bit while you're commenting Paradise Palms and see if I missed any prior questions. Joyce says she really likes her stamparatus. The washi tapes around the magnets does help. Just makes it easier to pull those off. Shanda says she loves her Stamparatus. Can't imagine stamping without it. Stella says she found the Stamparatus very helpful when she made 200 Save the Date cards for her daughter. Could not have done it without it. Wow, that's a big wedding. 200 Save the Dates. We didn't send out nearly that many. A good number, but not quite that many. Oh, well, thank you, Inez. She says these are pretty enough to be framed as decor pieces. Beach kind of day. Okay, I don't think I missed any other questions. Okay, my final reminder before I say good night is... Don't forget tomorrow, April 21st, Thursday, April 21st, one day only, free shipping on all orders of $75 or more, okay? And that $75 is product total um, before any shipping or tax would have been added. Um, so I guess that's it. Make it a great day. And I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday 